All right, so, <clears throat> you know, excited this week for our program to be in a position where, um, you know, we're playing a top 15 matchup game uh, with college game day coming into town. You know, I think that reflects a lot on what these players have done throughout the season, you know, to be at that point this late in the year for game day to be coming here. You know, this is a really good team we're playing with great players, um, you know, arguably the best personnel team we played all year. I think defensively it is. Um, so, you know, we're going to have a lot of challenges. You, know, you guys have seen our injury issues. So, you know, that is what it is. We need guys to continue to step up and make plays. And this is going to be a, a huge challenge because these guys have elite, elite players. When you look at A&M's defense, is there any specific unit that stands out to you, or is it just kind of a, a whole team effort sort of thing? It really looks like when you watch NFL defenses, you know, where basically everybody's a really good player, you know, that looks right. You know, a lot of times you watch, you know, you go to play somebody and you can tell right away after a few series, okay, you know, this player shows up as, you know, a weak link, you know, or this player is short, you know, or, you know, like a small D tackle, something like that, you know, that this is – you know, um, I mean, I was watching it thinking like, okay, <clears throat> Jimbo, you know, figured out from Coach Saban, you know, recruit the best defensive players in the country, get them on your team and, you know, helps you be a really good head coach. And that's what these guys have, you know, really, really special players that are, are dominant. In your career, when you've coached in these games where it's a very quick offense against one of these defenses, are there – tricks to try and neutralize the defense or does the defense usually dictate what the offense can do well it can go good and it can go bad and that's happened here look at the last two years versus alabama who has great defensive players when it goes good you know you're making first downs you know you're going really fast they're not getting lined up and when it goes bad they get the ball back really fast so that that is what it is with the system Lane, beyond Jerry On's big run early in the game, what was what was your assessment of the run game against Liberty? <clears throat> Not very good. That was the only explosive run of the day. I don't think anybody probably in the stadium or on our sideline saw it, you know, after that run, how easy it was. You know, he just stayed in stride, you know, second play of the game. Would have guessed that would have been the last explosive run of the day. So, you know, <clears throat> that was very discouraging. You know, we tried – a little bit different group up front, and we did not play very well. And we weren't very consistent at running back either. And, you know, it doesn't help. This is not an excuse. We should have ran the ball way better. But when the quarterback can't move really, you know, we're not running him at all. They know he's not going to pull the ball. You know, it's, you know that helps him a little bit. But, you know, there's there's no excuse for, you know, whatever the stats were after that run. When, uh, when this running game is at its best, how much of it is physicality at the line versus pre-snap movement and luring guys out of position? Well, I think it's a combination. I think majority of it is the use of tempo um, and people not lined up and cleats in the grass and, you know, or, you know, disguising of things with motions and different stuff in front of you. So, you know, you lose a gap and the ball breaks. Um, you know, and that's not – that's what happened on the long run. You know, there were people going, you know, and the ball hit and their guy fell back a gap. So, you know, that's kind of been what's happened throughout the year, you know, to be a top five rushing team in the country. And then after that run, we certainly didn't look like it the rest of the day. Lane, you got to start at Jalen Cunningham at right guard Saturday. After earlier this season, moving him over to defense, what went into that thought process and – you know, what did Jalen do to warrant that opportunity, and how did you think he performed? Well, I think, you know, I said this <clears throat> to our staff this morning, you know, this is always the case in life and with players. You know, you appreciate things more when they're gone, you know, and, um, you know, losing Ben Brown has been a major hit for us. You know, he was a very smart player, you know, helped the center who's brand new. Um, 
you know, and even though he was the guard, he was the leader of the group. So that has affected us, um, you know, and Jalen went in, did some good things and, you know, like you probably would expect a little bit inconsistent having just moved back over. So, you know, we got to, we got to get better all around, especially inside three players. John Rice Palmy had a big game, spe specifically in the second half, his best game of the year. Did you see some things from Liberty defensively that opened up some things for him? You know, John had a really good game because he had a really good week of practice. Um, you know, he had by far his best week, um, not even close. And so it was like you kind of see it coming. I think that he took, you know, advantage of opportunities with people being out and, um, and showed it in practice. And, you know, then took, took it to the game. And, you know, it was great to see. Dennis Jackson obviously missed the first pass, but none had a really big game for you as well. There have been some other receivers that have stepped up for some of the receivers that have, have been injured. Yeah, I, th I mean, I didn't realize it until someone sent it to me and I retweeted it this morning. Um, you know, I think it's 10 guys have had over 100-yard games rushing or receiving this year, you know, which is really unheard of. I think it said only the top SEC team was five. So, you know, that's a good and a bad thing. That's obviously because of injuries, part of that's happened. But, you know, it shows a lot of guys have stepped up and, you know, Danis did some during the game, made some big plays. And I'm kind of got off to a, a slow start offensively this season with some quarterback issues and whatnot. It seems like they've kind of figured it out just from your perspective. What is it that A&M does so well offensively over the last few weeks? Well, I think they really figured it out versus Alabama. Um, you know, you know, you look statistically, the quarterback played by far best in that game versus a very good defense um, and, and looked great. So um, they've been able to run the ball almost the whole year um, with two great running backs and a really good offensive line. And, you know, we're, we're going to have our hands full. You know, we've had issues with the run at times throughout the year, as we know. So... I would certainly think Jim was going to turn around and hand the ball off a lot Saturday. Lane with Matt Corral, is this a situation where time and rest between games are allowing him to get better, or is it just going to be that way the rest of the year with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games left on the schedule? I hope not. I, I, the problem is it's not like there's a bye, you know, sitting in there, so he kind of has – re-aggravated it, um, you know, every Saturday. So, uh, you know, I think this week will be very similar to last week, but hopefully eventually that's not the case. Lane, well, you know, how was Sam Williams doing? He seemed just a little banged up towards the end of the game on Saturday. Yeah, um, we hope Sam's fine. Uh, he played great. He's played a ton of snaps. You know, I don't – I'm sure – PFS, PFF has a stat, but I would not think there's defensive linemen around the country that have played as many snaps as he has. Um, you know, it's really been unbelievable. He's got games, a lot of games in the 60s, some games in the 70s. So um, he, he's been a warrior for us. So hopefully he will again Saturday. And, of course, with a game day coming to town, if it was up to you, who would be the celebrity guest pick? Well, it would be Katy Perry. I mean, that's a no-brainer. If you read Twitter, read my Twitter, but um, I just like when things have worked before, you know, like when coaches come up with plays and they want to run a play, I said, okay, well, can you show me it being run before? Well, I've seen this script before in this movie where Katy Perry shows up and Ole Miss wins. So I was on the other side of it. So work before, let's do it again. We saw on the sidelines Saturday that Mingo's kind of progressing where he's not in the boot anymore. Just Has he moved quicker than you thought he would in his rehab? And do you still think there's a chance he could be back this year? Yeah, I definitely think Mingo will be back. Um, I don't know when. Um, I kind of joked and said, you know, with <clears throat> where our injuries have been, we'll be the most improved team in the world from our last game to the bowl game. You know, so um, he'll be back by a bowl game at least. And then Braylon, just how did he feel after kind of getting his first exposure back? I think it was good that he got in there. Nowhere near 100%, you know, when you watch the film. Um, but, 
I just thought it was critical for him to play some with the quarterback so he had some type of rhythm with him. And, you know, so hopefully he'll be better this week. There's been a lot of positive momentum with former players coming back being mentioned during the game. How important is that for your program in regards to recruiting and the, the forward momentum of the program? Yeah, I, I think it's great. Um, you know, winning solves a lot of things. Um, so when you win, they come. And so it's good to have, good to see, and, you know, continue to build on that and keep winning. No come. <laughs>